things. So I've already done a practice on this paper and to conserve my paper I'm going to go ahead and use the back side. So for this project you're going to need your watercolor paints, your paintbrush, a cup of water just filled up a little bit so if you have an accident it's a little to clean up, not a lot, salt shaker, and crayons. Uh, please remember your, la your Chromebook should be on top of something as you're watching me so that if you do accidentally dump your water it doesn't go on your Chromebook. I'm going to conserve paper today so I'm going to use the back side of my paper but let me show you how I divided it. I took my paper and I folded it like a hot dog. So I went like this first and then I'm going to fold that in half. Now remember this is that thicker paper that was in your bag. It's kind of a little off-white. The drawing paper is white. This is thicker. This works better with watercolors. And then you're going to fold it one more time. Okay, so I have folded it once and one more time. And then when I open it up, you should have eight rectangles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm good to go. I'm going to use the back since I'm conserving my paper and this is just a practice. So if you make mistakes on the front of yours, you can use the back too. I'm going to go ahead and trace over these lines so you can see my eight rectangles really well. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay, label them. So this one's going to be called layers slash wash. I'm going to go ahead and do that one first. So with layers slash wash, we're going to add the wash first. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to just put some water on the paper. And you'll notice watercolor paper isn't super absorbent. So you're going to see that water sitting on top of the paper. I'm going to go ahead and load my brush up with the color. So I've got blue here and I'm just going to let it kind of drip. Now I can drip it down, wash my brush out, come back and just kind of move that paint around to wash the paper in just that color. And a lot of people use a wash for skies, if you're painting a sky, or just to fill in a big area with one color. Okay, and the paint will only go where you put the water which is kind of nice. So it didn't go anywhere else except where I put the water. The next one is called a gradient wash. And this one I like the best for the sky because what you'll notice is that we want to make it darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So we start by washing the paper with water. And if I'm going too fast, you guys can always pause it and rewind it, whatever you need to do. Start at the top. I'm going to let that drip down. It's called bleeding. You're letting the paint bleed down the paper. Wash my brush out and then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to help the paint go down. But I'm going to have it get lighter. So it's dark at the top and lighter towards the bottom. Okay, we're going to let that dry. The next one's called dropping in color. So again, we're going to same thing. We're going to wet our paper, but this one's a little bit more free form. We're not going to just use one color. We'll use different colors. So load your brush up. Obviously my favorite color is blue keeps popping up. Just drop those colors in, let them bleed wherever they want to go. Choose a different color. I like to choose colors next to each other in my palette. They seem to mix better. And you notice that they'll bleed better where there's more water. Okay, so you can kind of just let that sit. And sometimes they bleed a lot. They're not bleeding a lot right now, so maybe I'll add a little bit more. So we're just dropping that color and letting it go wherever. If you want to drip it down, it will all swirl together in different colors. Okay, the next one is called dry brush. So we will not 
uh, we will not be wetting the paper for this one. We're just gonna wet our brush, make sure it's clean, dab it off. Choose what color you want. And then you can draw whatever you want. Now you don't, you don't want your brush super wet because you'll lose control. This is the, the one way people who like to control their paint like the best with watercolors because it gives you the most control. Okay, so you can paint whatever you want. It's gonna stay wherever you put it. It's not gonna go like this one, wherever the water goes, okay? So you can just draw whatever you want with your dry brush. Okay, your next one is called Wax Resist. And this is where you use the crayons. So, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my yellow because it shows up really good with this. And my white. So I'm gonna pretend this is a night scene. I'm gonna draw a moon. I'm gonna color it in super dark. And I'm gonna put some stars around, again, making them really dark. And then I'm gonna put some little white dots for more stars. Okay, once that's done, now you're gonna wash over it with the dark color. So let's choose the black. And fill that paintbrush up with black. I'm just gonna go over it. You'll notice that the wax in the crayon is resisting the paint. So it's going to push it off and you'll still be able to see where you colored. So this one is the, a lot of kids love this one because it's fun and it's kind of seems like magic that that happens. So this is one that you can have lots of fun with. Okay, wash your brush out. Put it down. Our next one is salt. Salt one is fun for skies. It's fun for snow. But again, you're gonna do a, you're gonna do a wash. You want it really wet for this to work because salt pushes away the water. So we're gonna choose the color we want. Maybe we're gonna do another sky scene with some purple. Then I'm loading my brush up with a couple colors just so it looks a little different than the other ones. And then I'm gonna take my salt shaker. You don't need a ton. You just can put that on there and it will look, as, you, as it dries, you'll notice that the salt, is, I think, is actually, it's either absorbing the water so that it leaves little dots everywhere. Okay, the next one is the wash. Again, this is just a simple wash. We're gonna go back in a minute and finish this other wash. So let's do this with different colors. So just as a review again, remember a wash, this is the one that's most used by most watercolor artists. Put that water down first. The paint will only go where? Wherever the water is. So I'm just gonna fill that in my color and then you have your extra one in case you want to try one of these again um, but we're gonna go back to layers now I've gone really fast so this is not dry yet but when you layer you go on top of it and you paint another layer on top so this part over here is is getting dry but this is really wet over here. So I'm gonna just paint another layer on the drier part. And a lot of watercolor artists layer on top. And you'll notice that it's still transparent so you can still see that the, the red doesn't look as red because it's on top of the blue. But you're just gonna layer in something on top of it, okay? All right, so once you've tried each of these, you're done with the assignment for today. It was just to try, experiment with your paints. Come back, show me what you've done today, submit it in Canvas, and that's good for me. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, 
So I hope you had fun. 